Good morning, friends of St. Peter's. I'm recording here in the St. Peter's Library for this Tuesday morning service because we are still in the process of refinishing our church floors, so I'm not able to record there, but I thought I would I would take a page out of Deacon Bob's book and record here. And I'm grateful that you've joined us. I hope you'll click on the link that you see in the description of this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, so you can download the bulletin as we prepare today to celebrate the life and ministry of Thomas Akempis. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Father, you have nourished and strengthened your church by the writings of your servant, Thomas Akempis. Grant that we may learn from him to know what is necessary to be known, to love what is to be loved, to praise what highly pleases you, and always to seek to know and follow your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. The words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes, a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south, goes around to the north. Round and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they continue to flow. All things are wearisome, more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there such a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has already been in the ages before us. The people of long ago are not remembered, nor will there be any remembrance of people yet to come by those who come after them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, with that in mind, let's turn to Psalm 34 verses 1 through 8 and pray it out loud together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he told Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. 
Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Thomas Akempis, I first met Thomas Akempis in seminary. I was taking a class taught by my professor, John Hooker, who was also my liturgics professor. Um, and he taught a beautiful class called The Spirituality of Addiction and Recovery. And it was in that class that we read Thomas Akempis' Imitation of Christ alongside the 12 Steps. And we, our papers were all about how the different aspects of the Imitation of Christ echoed the 12 Steps. It was beautiful. What it showed us was the deep and abiding connection to what is ancient in the gifts that are the 12 steps, whether it be the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous or the 12 steps of Al-Anon or other modifications to this beautiful gift that did emerge actually out of Anglicans. I don't know if all of you are aware of that, um, that Bill W. Uh, was a brother in that way. Um, and so um, I was, I was really moved by that experience. And so I was delighted when we had a chance today to study and remember and celebrate Thomas. Now the name of Thomas Akempis is perhaps more widely known than that of any other medieval Christian writer. In fact, the imitation of Christ, which we studied in seminary, which he either composed or compiled, we're not entirely certain, has been translated into more languages than any other book ever other than the Bible. Only the Bible outstretches uh, and outnumbers the languages um, that it has been translated into. And millions of Christians have found in this book a treasured and constant source of edification and strength. His name was Thomas Hammerkern and he was born at Kempen, hence Thomas Akempis, in the Duchy of Cleves about 1380. He was educated at Deventer by the Brethren of the Common Life and joined their order in 1399 at the house of Mount St. Agnes in Zwolle in the Low Countries. He took vows, those of the Augustinian canons regular there, in 1407 and was ordained a priest in 1415 and was made subprior in 1425 and he died on July 25th, hence our present observance, 1471. 1471. He, he lived 91 years, which in his day was even more amazing than it is now, 1471, 91 years old. So I encourage you, don't take my word for it. Uh, when you have a chance, either go on your Kindle or download an audiobook or check it out at the library. Um, check out The Imitation of Christ. And while you're at it, Google the 12 steps and read them side by side and see the beauty that is present in both. The, the heart of The Imitation of Christ is really reflected in the, um, the collect that we prayed together this morning. I'll, rep I'll repeat it here. Holy Father, you have nourished and strengthened your church by the writings of your servant, Thomas Akempis. Grant that we may learn from him to know what is necessary to be known, to love what is to be loved, to praise what highly pleases you, and, put an asterisk by this one, always to seek to know and follow your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is indeed that surrender to God's will that is at the heart of the 12 steps, and is at the heart of the imitation of Christ. And I gotta tell you right now, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to let go and surrender to God's will. Okay, I'll speak for myself. It's hard for me right now. I'm finding this time we are in right now 
to be particularly challenging when it comes to letting go, acknowledging I have control over so very little of any of this that we're all living through, and trusting it all to God. You know, the readings we heard, whether it was the Ecclesiastes passage or um, the Psalm or the Gospel, were really striking. Um, and they were striking as conversation partners. In Ecclesiastes, you get this impression that none of it matters. It's all vanity. And frankly, given what we hear about King Solomon and his riches and uh, his gilded palace and, and gilded temple and all the things, I have a hard time actually believing that that's the person who wrote Ecclesiastes. <laughs> they just do not fit with one another. Um, and um, that's just a tradition. It's actually not seen in scripture. It's just a tradition of the, the church to say so. Um, and you contrast that with um, the beautiful psalm, um, which really concludes in taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Again, putting all of our trust in God. And isn't that what happens in the gospel? When um, Jesus first, first meets uh, Simon, who becomes Simon Peter and James and John, um, he commandeers their boat and gets them to go out into deep water and put down their nets and they haul in such a catch. It literally knocks Simon Peter off his feet. It's almost unthinkable to Simon Peter to do what Jesus asks him to do, but he does it anyway. He surrenders in that moment to Jesus' will and great abundance is found. That's my hope for all of us. It's hard right now. We need to do what we can to make good choices for ourselves and for the organizations we're a part of, to do our part um, as we uh, navigate this part of the pandemic, but we can only control so much. And the rest of it, we must surrender to God. And so in the spirit of imitation of Christ and in the spirit of the 12 steps, I invite us all to conclude by praying the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. And let us say some more prayers together. In our bulletin, we find the prayers according to Form 6 in the prayer book. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in God's church, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. And I invite you to put any prayer requests you have in the chat or comments. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And again, I invite you to put in your thanksgivings in the comments or the chat so we can pray with you. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. And we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. In this moment, I'm always imagining us back in the nave at St. Peter's and, and really the, the uh, wonderful uh, peace that happens at that uh, Tuesday 7 a.m. service and seeing all of you sharing God's love with one another. And let us bring our hearts together again as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until next time. Bye-bye.